set cover a general greedy heuristic. In this section, we will consider a very general problem that we also encountered in Chapter 8, the set cover problem. A number of important algorithmic problems can be formulated as special cases of set cover, and hence an approximation algorithm for this problem will be widely applicable. We will see that it is possible to design a greedy algorithm here that produces solutions with a guaranteed approximation factor relative to the optimal. Although this factor will be weaker than what we saw for the problems in section 11.1 and 11.2. While the greedy algorithm we design for set cover will be very simple, the analysis will be more complex than what we encountered in the previous two sections. There we were able to get by with a very simple bounce on the unknown optimal solution, while here the task of comparing to the optimal is more difficult and we will need to use more sophisticated bounds. This aspect of the method can be viewed as our first example of the pricing method, which we will explore more fully in the next two sections. The problem. Recall that our discussion of MP-completeness that the set cover problem is based on a set U of n elements and this list S1, S2, S3, S4, and so on to Sm of subsets of U, we say that a set cover is a collection of uh, these sets whose union is equal to all of U. In this version of the problem, we consider here each set Si has an associated the weight Wi which is greater than or equal to 0. The goal is to find a set cover C, fancy C, so that the total weight, the summations of Wi summing for all Si in fancy C, is uh, minimized. Note that this problem is at least as hard as the decision version of set cover we encountered earlier. If we set all wi equals to 1, then the minimal weight of the set cover is at most k if and only if there is uh, a collection of at most k sets that covers u. Designing the algorithm We will develop and analyze a greedy algorithm for this problem. The algorithm will have the property that it builds the cover one set at a time. To choose its next set, it looks for one that seems to make the most progress toward the goal. What is the natural way to define the progress in this setting? Desirable sets have two properties. They have a small weight wi, and they cover lots of elements. Neither of uh, these properties alone, however, would be enough for designing a good approximation algorithm. Instead, it is natural to combine these two criteria into the single measure, wi divided by the size of si. That is, uh, by selecting si, we cover the size of si elements at the cost of the wi, and so this ratio gives uh, the cost per element covered, a very reasonable thing to use as a guide. So, of course, once uh, some sets have uh, already been selected, we are only concerned with how we are doing on the elements still left uncovered. So, we will maintain the set R of remaining uncovered elements and choose the set SI that minimizes WI divided by the size of SI intersect R. So, here's the algorithm. Greedy set cover. Start with r equals to u and uh, no sets selected, while r is a uh, not empty set. Then we selected si that minimize uh, wi uh, divided by the size of si intersect r. Then we deleted si from r. After we break out from the while loop, we return the selected sets. As an example of uh, the behavior of uh, this algorithm, Consider what it would do on the instance in figure 11.6. It would first choose the set containing the four nodes at the bottom, since uh, this has the best weight to coverage ratio, 1 over 4. It then chooses the set containing the two nodes in the second row, and finally it chooses uh, the sets containing the two individual nodes at the top. 
It thereby chooses a collection of sets of delta weight four, because it、uh, myopically chooses、uh, the best option each time. This algorithm misses the fact that there is a way to cover everything using a weight of just two plus two e two epsilon. Sorry, by selecting the two sets that each cover a full column. Analyzing the algorithm. The sets selected by the algorithm clearly form a set cover. The question we want to address is: How much larger is、uh, the weight of、uh, this set cover than the weight W star of an optimal set cover? As、uh, in、uh, sections eleven and eleven, eleven point one and eleven point two, our analysis will require a good lower bound on this optimal. In this case of the load balancing problem. We used lower bounds that emerged naturally from the statement of the problem. The average load and the, the maximum job size. The set cover problem will turn out to be more subtle. Simple lower bounds are not very useful, and instead we will use a lower bound that the greedy algorithm implicitly constructs as a byproduct. Recall the intuitive meaning of the ratio, W i divided by the set of、uh, S i intersect R, by the algorithm. It is the the cost paid for covering each new element. Let's、uh, record this cost paid for element S in the quality C S. We add、uh, the following line to the code immediately after selecting the set S i. Define a C S equals to W i divided by the size of S i intersect R for all S in S i intersect R. The value C S do not affect the behavior of the algorithm at all. We view them as a bookkeeping device to help in our comparison with the optimal W star. As each set S i is selected, its weight is distributed over the costs. C S of、uh, the elements that are newly covered. Thus,、uh, these costs completely account for the total weight of、uh, the set cover, and so we have eleven point nine. If、uh, fancy C is the set cover obtained by greedy set cover algorithm that we just mentioned earlier, then the summations of W I summing for O S I in fancy C is equals to the summations of C S summing for O S in U. The key to the analysis is to ask how much total cost any single set S K can account for. In other words,、uh, to give a bound on the summations of C S summing for O S in S K relative、uh, to the weight W K of the set. Even、uh, for sets not selected by the greedy algorithm, given、uh, an upper bound on the ratio. The summations of C S summing for O S in S K divided by W K, that holds for every set says, in fact, to cover a lot of cost, you must use a lot of weight. We know that、uh, the optimal solution must cover the full cost. The summations of C S summing for O S in U, via the sets it selects. So this type of bound. We establish that it needs to use at least a certain amount of weight. This is a lower bound on the optimal, just as we need for the analysis. Our analysis will use the harmonic function, h of n equals to the summations of one over i, summing with index i starting from one to n, to understand its asymptotic size as a function of n. We can interpret it as a sum approximating the area. Under the curve y equals to one over x, Figure eleven point seven shows how it is naturally bounded above by one plus the integration of one over x dx, where the integration starting from one then integrates to n, which is equals to one plus long n, and、uh, bounded below by the integration of one over x dx. Integrating starting from one to n plus one, which is equal to log of n plus one. Thus,、uh, we see that h of n is equal to 
theta of ln n. Here is uh, the key to establishing a bound on the performance of the algorithm. 11.10. For every set SK, the sum, the summations of CS summing for all S in SK is at most uh, h of the size of SK then timed uh, WK. Proof. To simplify the notation, we will assume that the elements of SK are the first D equals to the size of SK elements of the set U, that is SK equals to the set S1, S2, S3 until SD. Furthermore, let us assume that these elements are labeled in the order in which they are assigned across the CSJ by the greedy algorithm, with the ties broken arbitrarily. There is no loss of generality in doing this, since uh, it simply involves a renaming of uh, the elements in U. Now consider the iteration in which element SJ is uh, covered by the greedy algorithm for some j which is less than equals to d. At the start of this iteration SJ, SJ plus 1, and so on to SD in R, by our labeling of uh, the elements, this uh, implies that the size of SK intersect R is at least D minus J plus 1, and uh, so the average cost of the set SK is at most WK divided by the size of SK intersect R, which is less than or equals to WK divided by D minus J plus 1. Note that this is not necessarily an equality, since SJ may be covered in the same iteration as some of the other elements as j prime for j prime less than j. In this iteration, the greedy algorithm selected a set SI of a minimal average cost. So this set SI has an average cost at most that of SK. It is uh, the average cost of SI that gets assigned to SJ. And so we have CSJ equals to, by definition, equals to WI divided by the size of SI intersect R which is less than equals to WK divided by the size SK intersect R, which is less than equals to WK divided by D minus J plus 1. We now simply add up these inequalities for all elements S in SK. That is, the summations of CS summing for all S in SK is equal to the summations of CSJ summing for all J starting from 1 to D, which is less than equals to the summations of WK divided by D minus J plus 1 because of the previous inequality. And uh, again, we summing from all index J starting from 1 to D, which is equal to WK divided by D plus WK divided by D minus 1 plus WK divided by D minus 2 and so on plus WK divided by 1 which is equal to h of d, the harmonic function of d, times wk. We now compute, uh, complete our plan to use the bound in 11.10 for comparing the greedy algorithm set cover to the optimal one. Letting d star equals to the maxima of uh, the size of si sum where the maxima is taken among all possible i denote the maximum size of any set, we have the following approximation result. 11.11. .11. The set cover C, selected by greedy set cover, has a weight at most h of d star times the optimal weight w star. Proof. Let C star denote the optimal set cover so that w star is equal to the summations of wi summing for all s in C star. SI in C star. For each of the sets in a C star, 11.10 implies that the WI is greater than or equals to 1 over H of uh, D star times the summations of uh, CS, summing for S in SI, because these sets form a set cover, so we have doubling summation where the outer summation is summing for all S i in C star, the optimal set cover, the inner summation is summing for all S in S i for such a set. If we sum in for all the cost C s for uh, the element in such a set in uh, the optimal set cover, 
which will be greater than or equals to the summations of CS summing for S in U, because we cannot guarantee that if the set they will overlap or not. And combining these with 11.9, we obtain the desired bound. W star equals to the summations of WI summing for SI in a C star, which is greater than or equals to the summations of 1 over H of D star summing for OSI in C star times the summation of um, CS summing for OS in SI, which is greater than or equals to if we take out uh, the harmonic function out of uh, from uh, the double summation, that is uh, 1 over H of uh, D star times the summations of CS summing for OS in U, which is equals to 1 over H over D star times the summations of WI summing for OSI in C, then CC. Asymptotically, then, the bound in 11.11 .11 says that the greedy algorithm finds the solution within a factor of big O of log D star of optimal, since uh, the maximum set size D star can be a constant fraction of the total number of elements and this is a worst case upper bound of a big O of log n. However, expressing the bound in terms of D star shows us that we are doing much better if the largest set is small. It's interesting to note that this bound is exactly the best one possible, since uh, there are instances where the greedy algorithm can do this badly. To see how such instances arise, consider again the example in figure 11.6. Now suppose we generalize this so that the underlying set of elements u consists of a two tall columns with uh, n over two elements each. There are still two sets, each of uh, weight one over epsilon, uh, one plus epsilon, for some uh, small epsilon greater than zero, that cover the columns uh, separately. We also create theta of log n sets that generalize the structure of the other sets in the figure. There is a set that covers the bottom most n over 2 nodes, another that covers the next n over 4, another that covers the next n over 8, and so forth. Each of these sets will have weight 1. Now the greedy algorithm will choose the sets of size n over 2, n over 4, n over 8, and so on in the processing produce in the process producing a solution of weight omega of log n, choosing the two sets that cover the columns separately, on the other hand, yields the optimal solution with the weight 2 plus 2 epsilon. Through more complicated constructions, one can strengthen this to produce instances where the greedy algorithm incurs a weight that is very close to each of n times the optimal weight. And in fact, by much more complicated means, it has been shown that no polynomial time approximation algorithm can achieve an approximation bound much better than h of n times optimal, unless p equals to np.